Well, the interesting thing about you, I, from my perspective, is that, you know, traditionally we see people talking about these concepts in a very buttoned down way, you know, in a very professional way. And you're kind of a wild man. You know, you're, oh, you man. have, a, you have a big personality, you have a, a, a sense of humor. And, and I think there's something about the lightness uh, that you bring to it that makes it really accessible for a lot of people. I mean, you, you take, it's clear to me, you take your work very seriously, but you don't take yourself that seriously. And I think it allows people in. And I guess, was there any moment where th did you, did you worry like about trying to, to, to fit into a box or were you just like, I'm going for it. This is who I am. I'm going to show the world who I am because it, it just seems like you are totally yourself. Yeah. I think with being by myself for such a long time and with being bullied for such a long, like when, I got bullied every day for seven. Yeah, how was that? That sounds so. Must have been the terrifying. good thing about that is that on some point I said, "Okay, like no one accepts me anyway. Fuck right. everyone." Right. And I became this person that almost out of being pressed up against the wall and having nothing to lose. Basically, yeah, everything came from nothing to lose. And then. I always want to be the best. So when I was at Steppenwolf in the improv with 24 other people from all over the world that got like recruited, like for the scholarship, I just wanted to jump on stage first in the improv craziness from the theater kids. And like, it's just this. And then when I made videos, I was like, yeah, I could hold back. I could probably get more girls if I don't make the alien videos. And because it seems to some people cringy and some people say it's cringy, like, why are you doing this? But they don't pay my rent. Right. And I'm getting more followers. I'm expressing myself. And if I don't express myself, something is like dying. Yeah. So I think it's more the, I, I, the positive is that I went through so much pain uh, that I can now just go outside on the street because I make a lot of videos outside on the street with a lot of people and I don't care. Yeah, it's amazing. I still care. I think people want to be honest. I still might care like a little, like there might be anxiety coming up, but uh -huh. I do it anyway. I used to drive Uber and Lyft before, right? I came with two bags. I didn't have anything like to the United States, uh, to LA. I used to drive Uber and Lyft, but I was like, I'm not going to drive Uber and Lyft forever. And so in the cars, I would start making TikToks. And the first TikToks actually that blew up were crazy TikToks I would do. Like I would just follow my excitement, film random things, but then also film videos in the car with girls and guys. And before that, yeah, there was like, oh, you want to do this again? There's anxiety and stranger. And I always ask myself this one question. What happens if you don't do this? Mm. Nothing. Right. Absolutely nothing. You just stay Uber driver. So I just had the anxiety and I trained myself like this and did those things, if that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah. really powerful. That's a powerful story. I th I don't know. For some reason, I feel, um, yeah, it's nice to hear a little bit about your story and the, and the pain that you went through because being bullied, I mean, it's not just that you were bullied for, for seven years, which is a long time it, it, to have to go to school every day and and i i assume that you you felt afraid a lot of the afraid, time afraid yeah and outcasted and right always on edge yeah because you never relax. knew when it would come that's trauma that's like it's like you're terrorized in that way yeah you you had a situation it was painful it was scary and because of that you adapted and became this person and and this and you know it, we don't like to think about it but in some sense, the pain made you who you are. That's right. And it, without that experience, you probably wouldn't be here delivering this message in the way that you are. You wouldn't have learned everything you had to learn. So the, there is a there is a gift in it, and that's that's a, a perspective that I think Tate has, and 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 I respected it, you know. And it's something that I definitely try to 
to teach my clients to because we don't want to stay attached to it. We don't want to stay attached to the resent to the resentment of the story. That said, we also we do need to confront it. I think, I think we want to look at it because sometimes, if it, you know, as we talked about earlier, if you if if you're if you deny it or you rationalize it, then um, you are subject to some kind of cognitive distortions or or, or some bad actions, right? Like it's really important to get in touch with what happened to you. I mean, you know, your story is very touching to me and, um, and, you know, I can really feel like I feel as I'm talking to you, like how painful that must've been. And, uh, you so know, how am I doing David? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great, man. Well, you, 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 I mean, you are an inspiration. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, how does that, it's interesting. Well, this is this is this is the edge. I feel right. Like I'll just I'll get you. I'm going to give you my. Well, I don't know, but I can imagine that if you grew up, boost me up, David. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm no, just I'm telling you what I feel. But it's like if you grew up bullied, and and had feelings of like you know self worth, like you weren't sure that that you were lovable in some way, and you felt like an outcast. I can imagine like that that becomes embedded in in our consciousness in some way and then and and then you overcame that and then now you become this successful person and who's doing legitimately good things in the world like and and at a high level at a very very high level for such a young man like you you have a lot of wisdom and 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 so I I I I can imagine that like that the new reality of, you know, being this powerful man with all this wisdom and all these uh, people watching you and learning from you and the old self of, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm an outcast. I'm unlovable. <laughs> like, I wonder if they ever kind of come into conflict a little bit or that old part of you maybe prevents you from really receiving fully how powerful and good you really are. Does that make sense? It does. Um, I, that's why I was so excited to talk to you because you have a very good heart and you care about people and you want well. I love talking to people who want well for me and because I want well for people, for good people. So I, you saying those things that I'm an inspiration, like, and those nice, bigger words that these powerful, like, I felt touched. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there's a part of me who's like, yeah, everybody can say that. <coughs> yes, you, know? like, you don't but, trust it. To just feel, oh, hold on, slow down. You don't trust ahead. it. You don't trust it. <laughs> I don't trust it. That's why. But yeah, I don't you don't trust, trust it. it. That's a funny. Uh, well, like, I don't even but, ask for a trust word. I'm just like, keep going. Okay. But yeah. but just let's just mark this because this is interesting, right? There's some way I said something, yeah. right? And there's some place inside you, even though consciously you're like, this is a good guy. There's some way that you don't entirely trust it. And that's okay. I'm not asking you to trust it. I trust it, it, but maybe you made it like a little bit bigger to make me feel a little bit better. You know mm, what I mean? I trust it, what, you what, that. What did I say? What do you think that I said that would like, is like bigger? But but I'm being, I wasn't saying anything. Like you came out of this incredibly painful situation, right. bad OCD, you experienced a lot of trauma. And then you did all of this hard work. And I know you're an intense guy and, and you're a smart guy and you figured it out. And now, listen, I'm 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 gonna tell you something. Mm -hmm. I'm a snob, right? I think most of the people on TikTok and, and Instagram, like they're full of shit. And I'm <laughs> I'm generally pretty critical of them. Uh, but not you. Like, I'm like, this guy's the real deal. I'm learning shit from him. I'm like, fuck, that's true. Like you know, when you talk about therapists and you're calling bullshit on them, like, mm, that's, that's, that's a good fucking point. Like I'm learning things from you. I watch your videos to learn and I can imagine, you know, you, you are an inspiration to a lot of people. You're an inspiration to me. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. And <clears throat> you must be an inspiration to your family. Like all of that shit happened to you. 
And also, you know, growing up, you know, your grandparents, you know, in the war in Germany, all of that trauma, all the collective trauma that happened there, you know, and everybody's living with that. And here you are like doing good in the world. I mean, I think what I'm saying is like, and I know this is somebody who's been famous. It's really important for you to take that in and to receive it because it's true. It's not the ego. It's reality. It's higher self. You're a powerful man. 